All right, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about the Ukraine, Russia, and this crazy bioweapons lab theory, which last week got debunked by the mainstream media or the way they debunk things, and you probably already know this, right? What they do is they say, this is not true. And then they cite someone else who says it's not true. Someone else who's not necessarily in the media, but kind of works proxy, you know, for the media. <laughs> it's like, okay, did you send out a group? See, because nobody does journalism where they would send reporters out into the field and they'd ask questions and they'd go to these locations, although it's not a real safe place right now to go to Ukraine and check out bioweapons labs, especially if Russia is targeting these labs and blowing them up. Let's hope and pray that no pathogens get released. I mean, you've got to vaporize these laboratories if you really want to uh, rid the world of more uh, government-sponsored pathogens. Now, I'm on this website called don'tspeaknews.com. I've been to other places. I'm not a QAnon conspiracy theorist. Just want to make that clear. I don't believe in Q. I don't follow Q. I think Q is BS. I think it's a big distraction. Um, it's a hobby for people who like conspiracies and in some cases really wishful thinking about certain things that they want to be true. I call a Q basically hopium. Anyway, back in 2005, the Ministry of Health of Ukraine and the U.S. Department of Defense signed an agreement concerning cooperation in the area of prevention of proliferation of technology, pathogens, and expertise that could be used in the development of biological weapons. So there's a, a paper out there. Uh, and again, this is the government of Georgia and not Ukraine, but it's nearby. And essentially, that was the start of the program, the Ukrainian American Program for the Study of Dangerous Biological Objects is controlled by one of the Pentagon agencies called the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, otherwise known as DTRA. Now, I've watched videos on this that go into more detail. Uh, there are plenty of receipts out there to look at this. Uh, so when someone says that's just conspiracy theory, you know, and by the way, all the people over the last few years who either like Donald Trump or were at least sympathetic to Trump, those people are constantly under attack because a lot of those people, they kind of got their fill of Trump. In other words, they like Trump, they probably vote for Trump again, but they've kind of moved on. Like they're kind of like, yeah, he, he set everything in motion. I will say like the dominoes started to fall because he wasn't from the inside, even though he made really bad judgments hiring Pompeo and um, Mike Pence and John Bolton and, you know, his son-in-law, who's just deep state, you know, troll, basically. And all of these people who, you know, he either fired, even what, Bill Barr, right? I mean, come on, Barr threw him under the bus. Um, look, you can have a differing opinion on what happened uh, in the last election. It's clear based on where gas prices are today that um, I think we would have done better if the election was, um, <clears throat> if it had a different outcome. I'm trying to be careful because that's one of the things that uh, they'll still censor you on if you disagree, all right, with the outcome. And I've said before, he's elected based on those states sending electors, and we'll just leave it at that. So anyway, I want to stick to this because it's crazy. And look, do your own research. You don't have to take my word for it, but I watched multiple videos on this, and this looks pretty convincing to me. See, my overarching opinion is Putin went in there, though, because of Donbass, because what happened there and he wanted to recognize those territories as independent kind of sovereign states. 
So maybe they could have set up their own governments to protect themselves from the Western part of Ukraine, which is basically very hostile to the East due to, you know, ethnicity issues, language issues, um, the fact that those two provinces kind of align with Russia. I think that is why Putin did this. And the fact that they violated a treaty and they've been doing this for eight years and approximately 14,000 people, according to multiple sources, um, 14,000 people died in these skirmishes, right? And Putin was just tired of that and he wanted to take control. And I, I hate war. I don't like war. I'm just saying this is probably the reason why. Okay. And then um, the denazification, I've heard that too. Um, it's a new word for me, but um, it seems to make sense. It, it seems to make sense if that's true. If there are uh, neo Nazis or people who uh, are doing serious harm to others in their midst because they align with an ideology that I think most critical thinking people don't like. All right. Most critical. And it's weird because everyone was called a Nazi. Trump people were called Nazis. People that didn't vote for Biden, people who just went their own way. Even people in third parties are called Nazis today because they're, they're just not going with the flow. And it's the ultimate insult. It's racist, Nazi, bigot, homophobe, all these things. They just throw them out there. And like Trudeau in Canada <laughs> called the truckers like misogynists. Oh, okay. You mean that female truck driver over there with the big rig? Yeah, she's a misogynist. Okay. Good job, Justin. So anyway, uh, it's just starting to get goofy because they don't really have any other way. What they want to do is embarrass you so you'll go away. That's what they're, they're trying to do. So a couple of paragraphs here that are kind of mind-blowing. So the Ukrainian American program for the study of dangerous biological objects is controlled by one of the Pentagon structures called the Defense Threat Reduction Agency or DTRA, uh, DITRA, not to be confused with DARPA. Over 16 years, US military biologists managed to achieve significant success. According to projects Acting Deputy Joseph Pennington, Ukraine received more than $200 million from the Pentagon to create a network of biological laboratories. That's just peachy. The money went to the opening of 15 bio labs across the country, we're talking about Ukraine, to work on the study and enhancement of pathogens and the most dangerous diseases. So they're going to work on the enhancement of pathogens. That's and after the last two years, we really want that, huh? What could go wrong? So again, this war where Putin is actually going to hopefully vaporize these places. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I mean, if he was just on a mission to vaporize buildings and obviously give people warning to get out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of for that. I'm just, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I'm, I'm for that. All right. Of course, if this isn't true and it's a hoax and it's all, I don't think it's made up though. I just don't. This would be another reason why Putin would go to different locations around Ukraine, you know, maybe locations that aren't as strategic as others um, just to take care of this very large problem here. But let's pray to God that none of these pathogens actually get out. But according to this report, the pathogens may have already gotten out in the last few years. Um, so let's go to this next part here. In Kharkiv, as well as Kiev, Odessa, and Lviv, studies were conducted on Sero prevalence to hantaviruses among healthy servicemen of the armed forces of Ukraine, a project under the code UP-8. Now, isn't it interesting that maybe we can't experiment so openly on American servicemen 
but we can certainly do it to Ukrainian servicemen. Fantastic, huh? The U.S. titled the task for their Ukrainian subcontractors as the spread of the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus and hantaviruses in Ukraine and the potential need for differential diagnosis in patients with suspected leptospirosis. <laughs> okay, so that's what they titled it. All right, just maybe to throw people off the track. As in other cases, after the start of the work of the American military biotechnologists, the region was overwhelmed by a wave of infectious diseases. Yep. So right after they started doing this, very important, life-saving, <clears throat> I'm sorry, life-destroying work, um, there was an outbreak. For instance, in the fall of 2017, there was an outbreak of hepatitis A in Kharkiv. Uh, at the end of 2019, there were large spikes of infectious diseases occurring in the Kharkiv region, this time meningitis. In the first three weeks of September alone, 29 cases had already been identified, um, more than half of them children. At the same time, 44 people have been infected with meningitis in the region since the beginning of the year. In just 10 months of 2019, 233 cases of viral hepatitis A were registered in Kharkiv and the region and 328 cases in the region total. These are very unusual numbers that happen to coincide with these bio labs and testing projects. And then there is another link uh, to something called dcweekly.org that you can get more information there. Um, next time, we will go back in time to the 2018 article and I referenced a video below. So he's just talking about the video where he got some of this stuff here. The US Army regularly produces deadly viruses, bacteria, and toxins in direct violation of the UN Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons. Hundreds of thousands of unwitting people are systematically exposed to dangerous pathogens and other incurable diseases. Biowarfare scientists using diplomatic cover test man made viruses at Pentagon bio laboratories in 25 countries across the world. These US bio labs are funded by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency under a $2.1 billion military program. Hey, there goes your tax money, or actually there goes the printed money that the Fed keeps uh, printing. And this is called the Cooperative Biological Engagement Program. That's what it's called. Sounds so friendly. And uh, located in the former Soviet Union countries such as Georgia and Ukraine, also the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Africa. So Georgia is definitely a testing for bioweapons. The Lugar Center is located in Georgia, 17 kilometers away from a US military airbase in the capital of Basili, just crazy. So you can also read documents on this. There's a, again, another link. It's an explosive article from the naturalblaze.com, which talks about this, came out back in 2018. Now, there were a few people who were onto this stuff prior to this theory, which again is being debunked by people who are basically saying it's not true. <laughs> That's how they debunk it. So um, again, look, this may or may not be true, but based on what we've gone through the last couple of years with bioweapons and the talk of how easy it is to create a bioweapon and to, to deploy a bioweapon through um, nanoparticle technology and all these different things that are emerging very quickly. And probably 20 years ago, this stuff was already going somewhat mainstream in 
bioweapons laboratories and within the Pentagon system here, which it's just mind blowing how these people think, hey, we can just test some bioweapons over here. We can, you know, see what this does to these servicemen and, you know, we'll move on from there and we'll find other people once the word gets out. Because there are a lot of Americans who understand that this is really bad. And, you know, we should get answers, by the way, from all of the people that continue to sort of gaslight us and tell us that we're crazy. Do an investigation. But see, they're owned. They're all owned by these companies, whether it's pharma, whether it's the military. You can't talk about this stuff or you become a target of them and you get banned or censored or deplatformed or shadow banned or whatever it is, uh, doxxed a lot of times, and it, it just goes on and on. I mean, this is some kind of big deal, what's happening over in Ukraine, and it should be investigated. Now, again, war is a stupid thing. I hate it. I, I never thought Putin would actually do this. He's doing it. He feels justified. If these labs were there and it was just a mission to destroy these labs, I would say, I don't really blame the guy, right? I mean, this is all on the outer edge of Russia. And, you know, if there's a, an outbreak of some kind, this is a guy who cares about his country, I think, even if people think he's just a strong man, authoritarian, um, KGB, you know, I mean, that obviously... People don't agree with me on this. Some people just think, huh, you're just, you're just a shill for Putin. I'm not a shill for Putin. I'm a shill for the truth here. I'd like to get to the truth. And then we can find out why Putin would launch this you know, unprovoked attack. But I think there was some provocation. It wasn't as obvious as usual military conflicts, but certainly it rises to the level where after eight years of failed negotiations, after a treaty has already been signed and just saying, look, telling everybody in the West, Ukraine should not be in NATO. Uh, this just looks like encroachment here. Russia is one of these countries that I think if you leave them alone and let them mind their own business and do their own thing, they'll leave you alone, right? I, that's what I think. But Obviously, Russia felt as though Ukraine and all the Western allies, even though you know they're not in NATO, but it doesn't matter, they might as well be in NATO because all the NATO countries are out there saying, oh, we support Ukraine. And there's a reason for that. And it's very suspicious to me that all of the people who were deeply concerned about the last narrative and we're gaslighting for two years about what you should do with your own body, those same people are beating war drums and you know, calling for a no-fly zone. And you're finding out too, all of these Republican type conservative, Marco Rubio, who I never liked, and now you got Rick Scott, you get all these people out there who are just walking the same line on this and don't understand that it's far more complicated than just hating Russia, because that's what all of us were trained to do. We were also trained to hate all of you know Iran and Iraq and all these different places. We were we were trained not not to like these people and to think that they're all evil, they're all terrorists, they're all going to do damage to our country, and we've done more damage to the world to provoke these countries, whether it's Russia, whether it's what happened on 9-11, it's all tied together. And the United States pretends it's blameless and runs the patriotic flag up the flagpole and says, do your patriotic, roll up your sleeve, do your patriotic duty, right? We support Ukraine. We've got our little flags at the State of the Union. And it's all just nonsense, really. It's, it's like, You've got to believe the right thing or they're going to go after your wallet. They're going to destroy your social credit score, which in the end will destroy your ability to earn a living and to survive in this world. So they're basically blackmailing you. They're using extortion. Just think like us. 
Russia, bad, Ukraine, good. There's nothing else to see here. And as I proved here on this video, and again, you can do your own homework, that what if there are bioweapons labs in addition to all the other things that are going on in this country? What if there are these labs and you know the Pentagon spent all this money? This is another thing people don't care about. Do you care that billions of dollars in your tax dollars are going over to another country so we can develop biological weapons of mass destruction. I, I care, and, and more people should be awake and alert. But when you have a media that shuts down critical thinking and controls thought, then there's no way really to get to the truth. There's your own mind and your own investigative powers. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if you're left or right anymore. It just matters about are you with the establishment or are you skeptical of the establishment? That's all, that's it. You can differ on your, you know, your conservative values versus your more liberal values. I'm willing to just let that stuff slide right now. We need to get to the heart of this, which is, are we being controlled? Do we understand that the future is not going to look good if we just sit by and allow the oligarchs and certain media organizations, which are basically in bed with the oligarchs. And I'm not talking about Russian oligarchs, by the way. I don't like Russian oligarchs, but I'm more concerned about the oligarchs that are outside of Russia because they're embedded in this new world system. And I'm really afraid for the future because so many people are just, they've been lulled and I don't know if you can wake them up. So best thing to do is try to wake up your friends and neighbors, give them a little snippet like, hey, did you hear about you know, that Russia Ukraine thing? Did you hear about like what was going on in Ukraine? They might have bioweapons labs there and then they're, they're like bombing their own people on the other side of the country because you know, those people are more you know, affiliated with Russia. Just make it simple and see what happens. Maybe you can get a conversation going. I know they're just going to say, well, Putin is so evil and bad and he's a Nazi and no, no, no. It's like, no, no, he's actually trying to fight Nazis who are in the country. Did you, did you know about that? Actual neo-Nazis? No, the media didn't tell me that. Well, because the media tells you something, you're just going to buy it hook, line and sinker. Anyway, I don't know. We've got to wake people up. And if we're unable to wake them up, we're going to lose our ability to communicate information freely. And it's going to be more and more underground stuff, less out there in the open, different platforms. You know, there are other platforms out there. I do have a channel over on Rockfin, and that is going to be a refuge when a lot of this stuff just gets banned or deleted. And you can't say this. I mean, if I upload this video and it gets taken down, that'll be strike two on this channel. And I've only got one strike left and then it's bye bye. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know how I violated community standards here, though, so we'll see how that they just arbitrarily throw that out there. Anyway, I've got to go. I'm rambling. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.